Hello, everybody. My name is Nasreen. I'm a director of technology at Expedia. Um, what that means is that I run the loyalty uh, engineering organization. It's a group of about 80 people in five locations. Keeps me up at night, not because I can't sleep, but because I'm talking to them. But, but we have a fairly, there's lots of jokes and lots of, um, there's lots of good things that come out of that. We talk about Downton Abbey, for example, with folks in the UK. It's really fun before the finale. Sorry? I want to kind of talk to the audience too. I mean, it's just kind of like have a conversation with you guys. I've been at Expedia six years. Those numbers are a lie. I've been at Expedia six years, and I've been on 24 vacations while I was there. Um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty happy with that statistic. Um, what else? The thing is with Expedia, you're kind of you peer pressured into traveling, which is fine by me. Um, we can actually talk about that as one of the things we look for in people. And it helps because our mission is to revolutionize travel through the power of technology. All of you know what Expedia does, I suppose. You go and you search for travel, flights, cars, hotels, packages, all kinds of things. Buy them, give us your money, hopefully, and have a fantastic time. That's what we want you to do. However, there are a couple of things we want to focus on uh, this year, which is we want our customers to be as happy as that guy who just got his iPhone and as loyal as this cricket fan. So to do this, to do this, we're going to talk a little bit about how loyalty, Expedia Plus, our loyalty pro program, plays into this. The program itself is fairly simple. You spend the money on the site, you get points. The more points you have, the more benefits you have, tiers, gold, silver, etc. Um, now, what happened is we built a program that was easy to earn a few years ago. We just want customers to get on it. Um, but the trick was that it was really tricky, it was really hard to burn those points. So you have value, thousands of points, but you kind of just have to look at them and not really maybe enjoy them as much as we hoped you would. So the program wasn't working for us. What am I doing? The program wasn't working for us because if you don't use those points, then we're not really building loyalty. We're not really building value for the customer. So we decided to... Uh, this was the sorry. This was the process. You would earn points on the site, and then you would um, create a coupon for twenty-five dollars or for multiples of twenty-five dollars. Um, I'm not very good at using coupons. Maybe some people were. They would find the hotel if they were lucky that would allow them to use that coupon, and then they would burn the value of the coupon. Not a lot of users actually got to the end of this, and it caused more pain than anything else. What am I doing? Sorry. Um, so we decided to simplify. And um, what we came up with was a way for users to not have to really be so um, strategic, so to, to plan so much, to prepare so much to use your points. And so what we did is when you got to the payments page, or when you chose your hotel, when you got to the payments page, we would just, we would just apply as much value as we could of your loyalty points to that purchase. So you see it over there, you're like, we can burn um, 16,000 points on this booking, and you can change that number. Say you want to save all your points for your big honeymoon that's coming up at the end of the month, you can do that too. But this way, you have the points, you're logged in, you can use it, you don't really need to use a coupon, which I, again, I find hard to do. Um, and so this is what we did. Now, sneak peek, um, some point in the next few weeks, maybe next month, you'll also be able to use your city thank you reward points if you have a city credit card on our site the same way that you use Expedia rewards points. So why don't we do this in the first place? Well, the truth is we just didn't have the foundation to be able to make this happen. We had to build a payment system that would support multiple types of payment. So you can pay partly in dollars and the other part in points. Um, we had to separate this payment system into little pieces so that we can tweak one thing over here and another thing over there, mix and match functionality. And we had to get these, this landscape of services out to production fast enough. So we had to work on continuous integration and continuous delivery. So this is what we ended up doing. We had to build those few pieces there, but really I just want to talk about this picture. Um, which is something that somebody on my team made for me. We have these sessions in which we plan these large initiatives because clearly there's a lot of work that we have to do. And in those sessions, there are, pi there are pipe cleaners and things lying around. People are in these sessions for a few days. And so somebody on my team, she made this, Amy Heinen, 
She made this tortoise and hare thing for me, and she left it at my desk, even though I was out of the office at the time. And really, there's a lot of, this is why I do what I do, because of the human touch, because of this ability that we have to, in the midst of, you know, talking about finance and reconciliation and points and databases, we're able to create a moment with each other that's beyond that, beyond the domain of what we do. So anyway, I'm gonna leave this slide there. Boop, 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 boop. Um, so that in case you have questions about the future, and I can take questions. Yes? We're working on it. <laughs> Has to be a mutual thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Support group travel. So the question is, do we have a platform to support group travel for large events? Um, we on our site, I think the limit is ten tickets or eight tickets or something. But the call center supports um, group travel, so we do weddings and things like that. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. Yes, so we had a bit of a problem on our hands because we knew City was coming and we had to build an experience that would work for that. Um, we couldn't just build it however we wanted for Expedia Rewards. But what we do is we A-B test our changes just like every other site out there. This change went out. Usually we plan for about two weeks to get to significance on the US point of sale with the number of users that we have. Within four days it was clear. Customers loved it. So put it out there. But. Um, this a shout out for my checkout team because this was my team that built this. Um, you see that thing with the currency symbol and the numbers there? We're trying to globalize this feature. It is so hard to globalize a currency because there are commas, there are commas and dots, there are gaps, spaces, and they all mean different things in different currencies. I want to know what it's like for you being a director of technology and you probably didn't start your career out that way. So how hard was it for you to get up and what, what's your experience been um, from when you were first starting versus being a director and what is it like for the other um, women on your team? Yeah, um, great question. I want that job where you can start off being a director in technology. That's what I want. Um, I started off, I was an academic in machine learning. I spent a number of years writing papers, reading papers um, into the wee hours of the night. I still have stacks of them at home. I uh, came to Seattle to work at Amazon.com as a web developer, and it changed my life, literally. I loved web applications and the pace of them. I mean, they still can't go fast enough for me in terms of the rate of change. Um, I, I actually worked as a product manager, a technical product manager, program manager, because I was so excited about web applications that I wanted to learn not just technical design, but product design as well. And that's how I ended up at Expedia. I started there six years ago as a technical product manager, um, became a, a, a team leader, a dev manager. Um, I had four people on my first team, and uh, then 10, and then 16, and then this, this happened. Um, I've really enjoyed it because as time goes on, I, I just focus in more and more on the fact that I want to be a technical leader. I'm lucky not everybody else not everybody else knows with such clarity 11 years in advance of what, what they want to be. But in my second year as a developer, I had a fantastic manager. I told him I want to be a VP of technology. I was an SD1 at Amazon. He said, you've been in a little while, right? Um, but but the, that was really a big part of it. You need, there's a great quote I read today by this woman, um, Khalida Brohi, I think her name is. She's uh, saving people from uh, honor killings. She said, to create great women leaders, there's only one thing you have to do. You just, te you just have to tell them that they have what it takes. And that was the thing. A lot of people along the way told me that I have what it takes. Um, and that's a big part of why I'm here. And that's what I do for any women on my team, not on my team, if, or any, actually anybody who wants to be a leader. I love helping people become new leaders. So this may be a bad idea, but uh, <laughs> to open that gate. One more question. Yes, I saw you first. I'm sorry. Sorry. 
So, yeah, I want to clarify. I realized when I mentioned that, that could come off like, what, does she not have a life? I actually have a very nice life. Um, but yes, no, it's about how you want to be available, right? So my team uh, reaches out, so let's say there's a, some, and they know when they need to reach out. For the most part, they're empowered um, to do what they need to do. And that's the one thing that we try to make sure is that do you have whatever you need in your geography to get your job done? It's only when, oh my gosh, this um, headcount request, I want to make an offer right now, it's not going through. And hip chat is the way I do it. They don't contact me when I'm asleep. And actually between the hours of, like when I'm at home for the most part, it's not much of an issue. But flexibility is key. And to answer your question, are there male managers to do that? Yes. Uh, Expedia is a global org. That's the only way it works. All our leaders do that. And that's one of the things that I have to say. It's not, it can sound like a dampener, but when you, when I'm thinking about the next level, when I'm thinking about the next level for me, when I'm thinking about going to lead maybe a thousand people or two thousand people, there's not a lot of people who sign up to do this. And you don't sign up to do this because you want the money, just because you want the money, or because you want the fantastic, I don't know, trips that you can go on to attend big meetings. You have to do it also because you want to do the work. And that's, that's a part of it. So a lot of, a lot of work that we do, really, as we bring more women into leadership, as we increase the diversity in leadership, is to change what being a leader means, to change the demands of being a leader. That's a part of it. But honestly, there is a component of going that extra mile or doing what it takes to make an org in five countries to make that work. That's a part of the expectation or the part of what you bring to the table. Okay. Thank you.